one of the first dry days of the year and uh, here we are at Pioneer Automobiles in Cheveley um, and we've got an A35. Now this isn't the sort of thing you might associate with me if you've been following me in print or on YouTube over the last few years. You probably realise that I normally go for something a bit more sporty, bigger, more powerful. But you know every time I've driven one of these cars uh, I found it great fun and so we thought we'd take this one for a, a spin and um, you know see what all the fuss is about. They're ever so cheap to buy uh, relatively and they're cheap to run. They do great economy. Parts are cheap, parts are easy to get. Um, they're even cheap to insure. You'll see a quote at the end of the film from sponsors Peter Best that show you just how affordable they are to run. So yeah, let's hop in this and uh, deploy the 28 horsepower that it has. Well, it's a little bit more in the A35. And off we go down the road and see what the fun is all about. Well, before we set off, I'll just shut the window for the, the wind noise for the sound, which has been a problem, but uh, yeah, these really are basic cars. Look, that is how you shut the window. Simple as that. Love it. If you're not familiar with these cars, then it can be hard to tell your way around the model range of difference between the A30 and A35 and things like that. Well, essentially, the first to appear was the A30, came out in 1951, but the 803 A-Series, which gave you about, what, 28 horsepower. In 56, the uh, entire range was uh, evolved into the A35, so you got a bigger A-Series, right up to 948cc, you got about 34 horsepower. And then from 62 onwards, uh, the A-Series got a further boost to 1098, and uh, you've got a heady 55 horsepower there. But it really doesn't matter which engine you've got in reality. I mean, the 803, yes, it's a little bit sluggish in the A30 if you want to keep up with modern traffic. Um, but, you know, you're not going to win drag races with the, with the bigger engine either, you know. Um, this is a 62 car, so we've got the uh, 948 mil with the 34 horsepower and it's fine, it gets along perfectly well. I mean, they will actually get up to about 65, if, you know, if you're brave enough. Um, the thing is, you're not going to drive an A35 like you stole it, because, um, well, they're just not that sort of car. <laughs> they're a bit roly-poly on the handling, and uh, the brakes uh, really do need some commitment. Uh, someone said to me earlier on, you know, you've got to do the stopping for it, and I know what they mean, you know, you've got to press the pedal pretty hard. The car uses what's known as a hydromechanical setup, so you've got hydraulics and then rods uh, to, to the wheel cylinders, and that, that sort of works fine, <laughs> but you know, don't be standing on it too hard in the wet. I mean, leave yourself some stopping distance and you know, just be aware that this is a really old car and it has, you know, the dynamics of a really old car. But, you know, you shouldn't be even trying to buy or drive an old car, of the, certainly a car of this age, unless you know that sort of thing, should you? So, you know, it's largely irrelevant. Road testers at the time compared the A35 to the Morris Minor, which was inevitable, I guess. They were, they were both uh, aimed at the same market, I think. The A35 was just a little bit cheaper than the Miner, but they were actually produced by the same company. Just a year after the A30 was unveiled, um, Austin and Morris ended up part of the same company, so they were in-house competitors. One thing most of the road testers picked up on back in the day was that the, the Morris probably had the edge on handling. Um, even though it's quite an old-fashioned platform and had the lever arm dampers and everything, um, it, it didn't pitch and roll quite as much as the A35. It, do, it does feel like a, a tall, narrow car, um, certainly if you start to pick up speed on a, on a bumpy country lane you, you feel yourself bouncing around a bit. They are narrow, you know, I can't imagine what it was like back in the day on kind of longer trips. My own grandfather apparently had an A35 and uh, apparently the whole family once took it on a, a, a holiday to, to France back in the 50s. I mean one can only imagine. <laughs> you, you don't think of it these days as, uh, as being a massive trip. But, yeah. Even though it's not a quick car by any stretch of the imagination, it's, it's, it's quick enough to be fun. I mean, I've no idea really how fast I'm going. I'm just sort of going as fast as I deem to be safe. But I'm doing something between 30 and 40 miles now at the old uh, Smith Speedo there. But it just feels safe and it feels happy at, at this speed. And it's another of those cars where you do need some skill to drive it properly. You haven't got Synchro on first, for instance, and you know the gearbox is old enough to need a little bit of sympathy. But if you, once you gel with the car, they're really satisfying, these cars to drive. It's probably as satisfying as mastering like a 1950s, you know, F1 car or something. Um, it's got a lovely light gear shift, um, and there's a real joy to be had in uh, sort of achieving a crunch-free change and just preserving enough momentum to get around a corner without bogging down and, you know, off you go again. You definitely notice on these uh, country lanes that you're, you're, you're rolling around a little bit. I mean, you do in most 50s cars, don't you? but the, the A35 does feel like it's a little bit tall and narrow. These cars are so easy to live with. I mean, there's nothing you can't do on them at home. Parts support is absolutely brilliant. Um, I think you can get pretty much absolutely everything you need. Um, 
This one, I think, uh, it's advertised at something like just under six thousand pounds, fifty-seven fifty, something like that. I mean, what, what great value! There aren't that many classics that are, uh, you know, that affordable, are there at all? Um, you get a pretty average MGB for that sort of money. Maybe you get a Herald or something. Or, you know, Morris would be a bit of a gamble at that sort of money. This is a really solid car, actually. It's um, it's quite original, I think. It's had bits of paintwork here and there over the years, but you know, it just has a lovely patina. It sort of uh, has something in it of each of the, the owners it's had over, over the years. I do love how narrow these cars are. Cheers, mate. <laughs> you can just squeeze through. Anyway, it's like being on a bike. But the thing is, you can probably tell I'm grinning already. <laughs> this isn't the sort of car I normally go to. Like I, like I said in the intro, you know, I normally go for something a bit more sporty or a bigger car or something like that, but <laughs> I do like A35s. I've driven A30s and I do find them a little bit worrying sometimes in uh, in traffic on like an A road when you know you've got trucks bearing down on you and things. But the A35, it has just that little bit of extra go, just just enough to make it um, a little bit more practical in in modern life. And um, I, I think it's great. We're on an A road now and we're going to get up to speed. We're getting up to well 40 miles an hour now. It does feel odd not having a seatbelt, but of course you know these cars are the age where you didn't get seatbelts. Predate seatbelts entirely, really. And there's nothing that makes you drive more carefully than that, is there? There's a real joy to be had from mastering the A35. James Hunt uh, had a van, didn't he, famously, and uh, you can see why he liked it, you know. And there's a whole industry devoted to making uh, A30s and 35s go much, much faster than they're ever meant to. You can swap in all sorts of uh, midget parts and things like that. And um, I think I, I spoke to famous Ray Davies once who told me all about it and you know the speed you can get out of these things is incredible. You'll see them at places like Goodwood racing and you know cornering at unbelievable speeds, one wheel in the air you know. Um, but this, this isn't you know that sort of car, this is just a standard example. Uh, yeah it's real, real fun to be had in driving this properly. It's unexpected but um, you, you can uh, heel and toe the gear changes re really easily with the, uh, the way the pedals are set up. And there's a lovely crisp response to these old carburetted A series. You don't get that with injected cars much. I was worried about how much fuel we had left. Now I remembered one of the A35 strengths is its great economy. I think people reckon to get about 40 miles to the gallon out of them. A35 wins the day. <laughs> and it has reminded me just how much I like A35s. Yeah, unexpected, but welcome nonetheless. So there you go. One of the most affordable classics you can buy. <laughs> and one of the most fun, I think. Yeah, oh cool. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, good. Oh.